Hey everyone, I'm DT10 and in this video I'll be showcasing the top 5 Doctor Who themed mods for Minecraft 1.16.5 and beyond. Now straight away, before we get into the video, this is obviously just my opinion. There are some fantastic Doctor Who mods out there that I haven't even been able to cover in this video and you may have a different tier list to me for the ones in this video. If you do, feel free to leave it in the comments. Also, please consider subscribing if you enjoy, as not many of you are and it would help me out a ton. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So we'll start at number 5, and that is the Weeping Angels mod. So this mod's latest version is from Minecraft 1.18, and it adds loads and loads of different types of Weeping Angels and a load of functionalities. So here is all of the items and mobs and everything that this mod adds. So it may not look like much, but this mod is actually really, really cool. It also has some incredible sound design, which you're about to see. So there are 8 different types of variants of Weeping Angels, however, each one of these also have different variants themselves. Themselves. So first of all you've got the Weeping Angel Disaster and there's a load of different poses and stuff you can get for all of these. Then you've got the Doctor variant and again there's loads of different variants of this one. Then you've got the Ed Weeping Angel and I sort of assume these are all named because they were designed by different people. Then you've got the Cherub Weeping Angel which is obviously a little bit of a smaller one. Then you've got the A Dizzle Weeping Angel and they look a bit like this. They're very very scary. Then you've got the Dying Weeping Angel and the interesting thing about these ones is they actually don't have wings although I believe they function pretty similar to the rest of them. Then you've got the Spare Time VA Weeping Angel, which looks a little bit like a villager. And then you've got the Villager Weeping Angel as well. And I've just been teleported. So that is another feature of these Weeping Angels. And there's the sound design. There's so much to go over and so little time to do it. But yeah, so as you just saw, these guys can teleport you anywhere. And they also do a lot of damage. So if we head into survival mode then the only way you can actually attack these guys is with a pickaxe because if you just try and punch them with your fist they actually do damage to you and you don't do any damage to them however if you use a pickaxe then you can do damage and you get this sort of cool breaking effect and then once you kill it you also get a very cool noise and then obviously they've got the standard weeping angel thing which is you turn around and you look back and they move now this for me just in testing has been a little bit unreliable for starters it doesn't work in f5 mode as you can see it's still very much moving behind me even though i'm looking at it and then if you also turn around and look back at it quickly enough it will obviously move a bit as well but that's sort of to be expected and then if you come into contact with this thing it will do some damage and then teleport you and there's a chance you'll all oh and it can teleport you underwater and there's a chance that you also get a death message if you are low enough to get killed by it however all hope is not lost because there's a couple of items to help you out so first of all if we spawn in a couple of these guys this is a timey-wimey detector and it will ding just like it does in the show if you're near weeping angels and then if we go sort of further away it will obviously stop dinging and then you've also got something called a chronodyne generator and what this does if you place it near the weeping angels and then left click it is it creates this sort of portal which they're all dragged into and they get killed by it and you get a very loud and terrifying sound and they drop a load of cobblestone and stone. So just before we move on structures, there's a couple more things to go over. So first of all, you've got the angel hiding in snow. That's not a mob, but that is just a block. And it's very, very cool because you can sort of use it for decoration stuff along with normal snow to make it look like there's some weeping angels stuck in the snow. And then you've also got a coffin. I'm actually not too sure on the functionality of this if it has any, but it does look very, very cool. And you can open it up and there's a few different textures. And then you've got some ore as well, Crontron ore. So you've got the Deep Slate variant as well as the normal variant if you're on 1.17 and beyond. And then you've also got a Cronton Ingot, Contron Ingot, sorry, which looks a lot like Nether Quartz. Then you've also got the Angel Plinth and the Angel Statue. Both of these are like decorative weeping angels. And there are absolutely loads of different types of this one. So the Angel Statue just does every single different variant. And there are some incredible ones that we didn't actually get to go over, such as some of them use the iron ore texture and stuff. And then the Angel Plinth just looks like it has a quartz pillar underneath but it's very nicely decorated and the quartz pillar is actually what you use to craft this. And then you've got the arm and the chisel. So I believe the arm, yeah, the arm is purely for decoration, but it's quite cool because you can make it look like they're sort of coming out of the walls and stuff. And then you've also got the chisel. And what this does is it changes the texture and it also changes the pose for each of these statues and plinths. So if you right click it, you can cycle through all of the different poses. And then if you left click it, you can change the texture to something else. So there's a copper one, rusted, there's loads of different types of variants. So that's a 
very brief description of all of the items and stuff that it adds, and now we'll move on to structures. So there are two different structures in this mod, the catacomb and the graveyard. So first of all, we'll check out the catacomb. So from my very, very basic testing, this generates much like a stronghold does. And as we get close to this thing, you'll notice something pretty cool. All around us, give it one second. Yeah, look. It all turns to this really cool sort of humming noise and then this amazing sort of fog. And then there is absolutely loads of these weeping angels in here. Now, this is also just one variant of this catacomb. There are tons. Oh, and I've just been teleported. Huh. Teleported right next to one of these things. And look, there's a bit of an example. This thing just teleported me 385 blocks, so it can teleport you quite far. But yeah, there's loads and loads of different variants of those catacombs. For example, I found one earlier that had some really cool looking bridges and some water underneath. And yeah, they're a very, very nice structure. And then we'll also just check out the graveyard. So this is very much an above ground structure and it looks that terrifying. I didn't no, they did that. Okay, that's actually terrifying. Please stop. This is oh, this is actually freaking me out. I don't like this at all. Anyway, uh, but this, this is the graveyard. So this is a very cool above ground structure. And you can also find some loot here again. There's loads of different variants. And this is where you find the coffins and stuff. And they've also got these. And as far as I'm aware, you don't get actual weeping angels in this graveyard. I think it's just the statues. But this knocking is really freaking me out. I can see why this is an absolutely terrifying mod. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all this mod has to offer. Some very, very unique items in the way that they work. Loads and loads of different types of weeping angels. Some excellent decorational blocks, some ores. And then you've even got those two different types of structures which look different almost every single time you come across one. So coming in at number four, we have the regeneration mod. So this mod is also for 1.18 and it adds loads and loads and loads of different features. So you've got some weapons, you've got loads of different items, some mobs, you've got loads of different armor, you've got some tools, you've got some different blocks and you've even got some ores. But the first thing we're actually going to be covering is in survival mode and there's a second tab right here. So this is the customization menu for your regeneration. Generation. So this is the noise it makes when you regenerate. Then this is how you can switch between different arm types. So I've obviously got the Alex one for my skin, which is three pixels. Then you can change to Steve, which is four, and then have it set either. Then the colors is actually the colors that you will regenerate with. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to leave them like this because they look really nice. Then this tab right here lets you change what the particles do. So how the particles look when you regenerate. And there are loads of different types, some of them related to Minecraft and then some of them related to Doctor to who like the Troughton one for example then you've also got the skin icon and this basically lets you choose what skin you want to regenerate into so once you've got one you're happy with you just press save and then press back and then you're ready to regenerate so you need to grab yourself one of these a chameleon arc and once you right click it it gives you an advancement this is this watch is me and it allows you to be a time lord it says at the bottom you've become a time lord and yeah that's pretty much it and then all you need to do is die and we will see some very very cool stuff so first of all you've got these really cool sound effects then you've also got a message at the top saying you are in a state of grace press y to regenerate and eventually it it will do this it it will regenerate so you get this cool thing and then look We've transformed into Graham, which is the one we selected. Then I'll also try out a couple of different variants of this. So we've got the fire regeneration right here, which looks like this. So here's something quite cool. My new trait is I have extremely long arms, so I now have huge reach. However, we also get a load of random effects when you regenerate, so I've got Mining Fatigue 2 right now. But yeah, it's really weird sort of playing with this incredibly large reach. And then that was the fiery regeneration, so that's the one we sort of see in New Who. Then to finish off, I'll try out this Ender Dragon one purely because it sounds interesting. Oh, that's quite cool.
Oh, and then when you fall, you also get reduced damage, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's a very brief overview of the regeneration feature. However, there's so much more that this mod has to offer. So first of all, you've got three different types of spawn Time Lords. So you've got a female Time Lord Council member, then you've got a male Time Lord Council member, and a Time Lord Guard. So there's obviously loads of different variants of each of these, and then you've also got their weapons. And you also get an advancement for having both of these. So you've got a Stazer, which can shoot like this. <coughs> Oh, and they make human noises. That is not what I was expecting at all. Then you've got a rifle which shoots like this and has a longer cooldown, I believe. Then you've also got loads and loads of different elixirs. So I believe what this does is effectively makes it so that you can choose what you want to be when you regenerate. So these are all the different types of effects that you can get from your regeneration, and you can use these to choose which one you want. Then you've also got various armor sets. For example, the Time Lord Soldier set I believe this is. Yeah, Chancellery Guard Advancement for having all of it and it looks like this. Then you've also got these bits. So this is the Time Lord female outfit. So the collar piece, the suit and the lower robes like that, which looks very, very cool. Then you've got exactly the same for the male one as well which doesn't look too different. It's just got some extra gold bits. And then you've also got the Time Lord shoes, which work with both. And then you also get an advancement for having a full set of the Gallifreyan robes. And yeah, I really, really like this, actually. This looks amazing. So next up, we'll look at this, the bio container. So this is basically the hand in the jar that we see from the 10th Doctor's era. And yeah, it looks really, really cool. Now, you then need to grab yourself some hands. So I believe if you shift right click while holding like a sword or something, then you can basically chop off your own hand which is a little bit weird and pop it in here now this is your energy so right now we've got energy of 0.0 and trait boring because i've grabbed it from the creative inventory however what you can do is actually change these traits so that when you regenerate you keep the same traits as you had in the regeneration before so if you really really like whatever you've got for example that long reach that we had earlier you could keep it using this thing and then it also allows you to store your energy which i believe is incredibly important for this mod oh and by by the way, I completely forgot about this earlier. If we go back over to our Time Lords, you can actually right-click these guys to trade with them, just like a villager. You can give them some very high-value items in return for these weapons. And I believe every single one has the same trade. Oh, no. Okay, so this one has some very, very different trades. So you can trade lots of different elixirs for this one. And yeah, that's a really, really nice feature. Then we've also got some Zero Roundels. So I think these are the Roundels from the Zero Room, if I'm correct in saying that. And then we've also got Asbantia which I'm going to assume takes an incredibly long time to break if it's even breakable. If we grab ourselves a netherite pickaxe, oh yeah, that, that's quite a long time. I'm going to assume it's something relatively similar to obsidian. That feels pretty similar to obsidian and it does actually drop, which is quite interesting. Then there is also one structure in this mod and that is the Time Lord Hut. So if we go and have a look at this, then this is what we find, a very nice little hut. The generation does seem a bit interesting. It's sort of cut into this hill there. I'm not sure if that's deliberate, but if we head on inside here, you can see a couple of different Time Lords, a chest containing some loot, a grindstone stone cutter, custom head for decoration, which is quite a nice detail. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, there's just a couple of the features that this mod has to offer. It is a really huge mod, and unfortunately, I don't have the time in this video to go super in-depth on it, but believe me, it's an amazing mod, and you should definitely try it out for yourself, and if I could go in-depth, I definitely would. But we've got to move on to the next one. So coming in at number three, we've got the Tardin mod, or Time and Relative Dimensions in Minecraft. So this is a 1.18 mod, and it adds exactly what it says, a TARDIS in Minecraft. This is actually our first Doctor Who mod that adds this, which is why it's in third, not fourth. Because this, technically speaking, has a couple less features than the Regeneration mod, but I really like its simplicity, and it's just a really nice way to travel across your world, and it still feels very, very Minecrafty. So to start with, you've obviously got the Tardim yourself, and that can be crafted using a Dragon's Breath, four Lapis Lazuli blocks, one Glass Rotor, which you can find right here, or Time Rotor, sorry, which you can find right here, and then one Tardim door as well. And that Rotor and door is also completely craftable. It's a really nice and survival friendly mod. So once you've got your Tardim here, you can see it gives this really nice sort of guidance of where you can place it. So if you can place it on the block you're hovering over, it will be the normal color, and if you can't, it will be red. 
So right click it to place it down and there's your Tardim. It's got some really nice hitboxes and it looks really nice. I absolutely love this texture. And then as you head on inside, the doors open like that and you can go straight inside your TARDIS. So something really nice about this mod is the controls. So the red controls right here, they increase your coordinates by 10. So that's X, Y, and then Z. And then these blue ones decrease each one by 10. You've then also got the flight lever, which we'll go over in just a second. That obviously dematerializes and rematerializes your TARDIS. We've then also got this dial panel, and that basically changes your landing direction, a bit like a compass. We've then got the rotation switch, and that, for some reason, unlocks and locks your doors. I don't quite know why it's called the rotation switch, but there you are. Then we've also got the TARDIM lever right here, which sets your coordinates for home, and that can be binded through this thing right here. So this is a computer panel, and you can basically put a load of commands in here. So the way you use this to set your coordinates for home is you slash home and then write whatever coordinates you want and there you go, it'll say coordinates set for home. Then you've also got this button right here that shows your flight information including your dimension which is the overworld, which way you're facing and then your location and then you've finally also got this which is the monitor and that gives you your current location instead of your flight information because this is obviously where you're going to go and this gives you where you are right now. They've also got something else which isn't technically part of the TARDIS controls but very necessary necessary and that is the fuel storage. So in this hopper you put basic stuff that you'd use for fuel in Minecraft. So for example we can grab ourselves some coal and we can chuck it in this hopper right here. Then once we dematerialize and we travel a decent way Oh, and you can also get the very cool dematerializing sound right here. So let's travel a couple of blocks this way. Then if we rematerialize and we land, the fuel would have actually gone down. So as you can see, it's putting more and more coal. It's just used about 10, I believe, or a nine, sorry. And it's put them into the fuel bank and refueled it. And then if you run out of fuel, it just means you won't be able to fly the TARDIM anymore. You've then also got loads and loads of different types of roundels and a ceiling light, which you can see right here. So that's pretty much all this one has to offer. However, that was very, very basic. And the reason for that is I've actually done a full review of this mod in the past. I did it about five months ago, back when this mod was 1.17, but not too much has changed. So there'll be a card on screen right now if you'd like to know a bit more about this mod, or you can click the link in the description. Okay, so now we're starting to get a little bit closer to that number one spot, but just before it, coming in at number two, we have got the new TARDIS mod. So this mod is for 1.16.5. And you're going to have to be a bit patient with me if you're a fan of this mod because I have literally only ever played it once. It was very briefly in survival and this is basically my first time looking at a recent version because I played the 1.14 one in creative mode. So there's loads and loads of stuff to cover. So I'm obviously going to be able to cover a very small amount of it. But yeah, this mod is absolutely crazy. So one thing I do know about this mod is that you have to use the following two items to find your TARDIS, which is actually really interesting. So you need a pocket watch and a bell. So a pocket watch will, I believe, point you in the correct direction. And then a bell, if you ding it, if you're close to the TARDIS, it will actually make a different sound. It'll make a cloister bell sound instead. So that sort of lets you know that you're getting closer to it. Now it says description, tells the local time of the dimension your exterior is in. Oh, I thought this helped you find it. I guess maybe it doesn't. I'm not too sure. I mean, worst case scenario, you sort of just keep dinging this bell going in a random direction. Oh, uh, there you go. Wow. It's actually really close to spawn. Okay, so that's what I mean. You get this sort of really cool, cool cloister bell sound just like that. And then if we go down into the caves, we should be able to find the broken TARDIS exterior. Okay, maybe I was just being stupid, but I could not find that. So I've spawned one in instead. So this is a broken exterior. There's loads and loads of different variants. Although I seem to be getting... There. Okay, there you go. There's a different variant. This is the one I've seen the most. And yeah, there's loads and loads of different types. For example, you've got this one as well. I particularly like this one. It looks very, very nice. But yeah, you then need to basically encourage the TARDIS to let you in. Because the TARDIS likes adventuring, there's lots of different adventure type items that you can give it. So for example, you can give it the different types of ender eyes and you can give it bells, clocks, fills, maps compasses and loads more so look as you can see we sort of feed it this and eventually if you give it enough you're able to open the door and head on inside now it's got bigger on the inside it's a little bit glitchy because i don't think it's fully loaded you can open the door fully and head on in and this is super cool so look you've got a little bit bigger uh, smaller on the outside right there but then you've got some amazing sound effects 
and a really cool looking broken TARDIS. Now, this music, funny enough, isn't actually part of your music tab at all. It must be part of something else because I've got my music off, but I can still hear this incredible music. It's a bit dark in here, so I'm just going to place some torches around the place. But yeah, so you've got some really cool stuff. Now, one of the amazing things about this mod is the controls. Look, each one of these things does a different thing. Every single one of these little buttons does a completely different thing. It is genuinely incredible quite how in-depth these controls are. Basically, everything you click has a different functionality. So, for example, look here, you can select different biomes to teleport to, and it does loads of cool little animations. I absolutely love this. Oh, look, you've got little stuff you can spin, little stuff like this. I assume this is a handbrake or something. You've got globe you can spin you've got loads of little buttons to press there you've oh there's so much i don't even know what half this stuff does but it's just amazing you've got a traffic light who doesn't love a traffic light and then of course there's some incredible blocks here that i'm not going to have nearly enough time to go over but if we go in spectator mode and head on outside you can see this tardis is actually quite large so it's got a second room right here and then you can actually also reconfigure this so you can change your exterior using an ars machine I believe you can use an ARS tablet, uh, I guess, close to room, maybe, okay, I'm not entirely sure what that did. I think you then also need the ARS egg as well, and if I put that right here, oh my gosh, I this is so in-depth. I don't know why I've never played this before. I'm sort of just having way too much fun. Oh my gosh, this just exploded. I'm having way too much fun exploring this to actually give my proper, like, professional, in quotation marks, opinion on it. And, oh, you've got the Artron banks. All of these textures are incredible. Oh my word. Right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll carry on exploring this, and if you want, you can use the timestamps to skip to the number one spot. But I'm going to keep giving myself very much first impressions of this mod, and I'll leave a link to a very, a much better review of this mod down in the description for you guys to check out. Okay, this looks pr promising. I've got a manual. Oh my word. Okay, um, I'm going to read this. Okay, this is definitely your dematerialized lever. But it's made the, like, the, um, the emergency sound. So I definitely think I'm missing something here. Okay, so there's a monitor right here. So you can change the interior. So right now we've got the abandoned steam interior. But we can change it to the normal steam interior. Does that work? Not enough Artron. Okay, so you need to grab yourself some Artron. You can tell I'm learning this as we go along. Artron. Oh my gosh, why is there so many different types of Artron? Okay, right, I'm gonna get the one that says hi because I think that will be the most effective. And I think we had to put them in here, right? Uh... Okay. Oh! Is this like a... Have you got to connect these up? Oh, that's really cool. So you have to connect that one to that one, that one to that one, and then that one to that one. Did that work? Okay. Okay, I get it. Have you got to do this all the way along? I guess you do. Okay, I've put these all the way along. I don't know if that did something, but now I'm gonna go ahead and try and change the interior. Please? You need a hundred more, but I put some Artron in! Okay, I've got an Artron collector and an Artron pylon. Kinda hoping one of these will do something. Oh, that's new. Okay, kinda hoping that's powering something. Right, now let's see if we can do this. You need a hundred more, but I've got Artron. Oh! I've just placed a pylon. It's doing something quite magic looking. Uh, okay. That looks promising. What about now? Nope, still not enough Artron. I don't know, this looks like Artron to me. Okay, right here I've got a TARDIS engine. Oh, no, that's the thing we had. That's the thing that's down here. Okay, so this is the engine. Right. Oh, wait. Do each of these... Oh! I did not realise that each of these, like, sides does a different thing. Okay, that changes things. Okay, so now the TARDIS can refuel. Right, that's good. That sounds like what I want. Now I'm gonna go back up here. If I can get through. Oh, there's a chain. Now I'm going to go back up here. See if we can change the interior. That is my one goal. Not enough Artron. Oh, right. Okay, I give up. Look, this mod is incredible. There's so, so much to explore. It's actually ridiculous. 
So as I said, I'll leave a full, like, look at how many blocks there are here, it's insane. But yeah, I'll leave a full review of this mod down in the description. But I hope you sort of enjoyed my random little first impressions of it. Because uh, not many of these mods is actually my first impression. This is the first one I've basically not played any of at all. So yeah, I'm definitely enjoying having a look at this. And I hope you enjoyed my random little reaction. But now, finally, we have the top spot, number one. And that is, of course, the Dalek mod. If you weren't expecting this, there's something seriously wrong with you. But anyway, this is a 1.16.5 mod. And I'm, again, a bit like with Tardim, I'm a bit biased. Because I am incredibly, incredibly familiar with this mod. But anyway, let's get into it. Let's see what we can do. But yeah, this is just an absolutely incredible mod for all of your Doctor Who needs. Now, you may be wondering why tar the new TARDIS mod isn't in top spot, because it has a lot more features than this. Well, I am also including the 1.12 version in this general sort of Dalek mod umbrella term. Because in case you weren't aware, the Dalek mod has recently, incredibly recently, the last couple of months, been remade in this brand new 1.16.5 version. However, for years before that, it was actually in 1.12. And there are tons, and I mean tons, of features in that 1.12 update. Loads of different planets, so many different TARDISes, mobs, blocks, all of that stuff. And com when combined with all of the stuff from this new version, it's insane. So the basics of this mod is that you grab yourself a TARDIS coral plant which you can craft using various different resources I've got a video for that which will be linked on a card on the top right right now and then it will over time it will grow into your TT capsule once you've then got your TT capsule which looks like this you can choose what skin you want and then it will spit out a TARDIS key You'll, it'll say your TARDIS is growing please wait you can open the doors and head on inside now you get some very cool little tunes there and you get a full guide on how to use the TARDIS. So then this is your basic TARDIS interior. There's three to choose from and it's based off of which exterior you choose. And then there's loads of different controls. You've got a flight lever, you've got the chameleon panel, which you can also use to change your skin and you can unlock them by using XP. And here's the police box. So there's 13 different types of police boxes right now. So for example, this is the 13th Doctor's one. And if we go and have a look at that, you can see it's got a very nice sort of Minecrafty looking texture. I think it fits really nicely in the base game. Then we've also got a really nice looking rotor that goes up and down. We've got a fast return lever and I don't, I still don't really know what this does to be honest. Then you've got a waypoint panel, you've got a dimension selector, so you can actually go back in time in this mod. You can go to Minecraft Inf Dev, you can go to the normal overworld, you can go to Cave Game, you can go to the Nether and you can go to Minecraft Classic. So that's really, really nice. And then you've also got your coordinate panel so you can change all your coordinates very much like you had in the Tardum and in the new TARDIS mod. And then if you press this bit right here you can toggle your height calculator then you've also got your changing increments then you've also got your rotation so that you can set your TARDIS landing direction and it actually does like southwest northwest all of that stuff which is actually quite nice because it means your TARDIS can land diagonally then you've also got your flight information and your TARDIS information and current location on this scanner at the back as well as a fluid link thing which is how you fuel up your TARDIS and then an ARS machine which is actually customizable so you can add your own interior interiors to the mod and I've got a couple of data packs which do that which you can find using another card on screen and then you've also got loads of different blocks so you've got loads of different rotors you've got the light boxes which you can see over there you've got tons and tons of different types of roundels you've got some different types of clothing a fez a gas mask 3d glasses dalek eye stalk black glasses and these actually have different functions so for example if you wear a dalek eye stalk it actually makes it so that daleks can't see you and you also get this really cool overlay then you've also got a huge variety variety of different blocks right here so everything from about here is added in the Dalek mod and it's a huge number of items. It's absolutely insane. You've got some decorational blocks like a weeping angel statue, an engineering table, lamp post, special weapons Dalek statue, which was also in the old version, which is very nice. You've got some redstone. There's basically almost every single tab in the creative inventory has something that was added in the Dalek mod. And this is what we'll cover next, some of the mobs. So obviously wouldn't be a very good Dalek mod without the Daleks. So I'll just grab some of my favorites right here then you've also got cybermen autons and weeping angels so these are the daleks they have really really cool textures and they're also all incredibly unique so they all have different attacks 
for example, these ones do smoke. So that actually does quite a lot of damage and it also gives you slowness and weakness. Then some of the other ones have lasers. Some of them, like the suicide Daleks, blow up. And yeah, there's just lots of different types of attacks. Then you've got the Molten Dalek right here, which has an amazing texture. And it's going to start to get very loud over here, so we should probably move away. Then you've also got the Special Weapons Dalek. This one is absolutely lethal. Do we have a demonstration? Yeah. So here's an example of a different type of attack. The Molten Dalek will shoot fire at you, which you can see from these really cool particles. And there's loads of other attacks they have as well. You've then also got the Cybermen, which for now just have one texture, and that's sort of the new Who texture right here, which looks very, very cool. And these also attack you with laser guns right here. Then you've also got the Autons, and these have loads and loads of different types of textures, and they also have their laser guns. And then finally, you've got the Weeping Angels, which work very much like how they did in the first mod we reviewed, the Weeping Angels mod, in the sense that you turn around, and then you look back, and they will have moved. Yeah, there you go. And I actually think this is really quite well done, because even if you're in F5 mode, as I can demonstrate right here, they won't move. Even though I'm right next to them, they won't move. So this sort of not moving is done incredibly well. They, you can all, it's almost impossible to catch them moving. It's really, really good. However, they don't unfortunately have any sort of teleportation thing. They sort of just, they sort of just kill you. You've then also got a couple of structures as well as loads of these items. But again, this is a huge, huge mod and I'm not going to have time to review it all. However, as I said, I'm very, very familiar with this mod and I've actually done many, many reviews of it in the past. So if you'd like to go a bit more in depth on this latest 1.16 version, there's a card on screen right now, or you can use the link in the description and it will take you to my full review of this update. So yeah, there we go. That was my top five Doctor Who mods. The Weeping Angels mod, the Regeneration mod, the Tardim mod, the new TARDIS mod, and then the Dalek mod. These are all incredible mods and it was genuinely really difficult to put them in a tier list like this because they're all just incredibly, incredibly well made. Again, once again, apologies if I've missed anything. I know I've missed absolutely loads, particularly in the TARDIS mod, and then I also missed some stuff in the Regeneration mod as well, so I'm really, really sorry about that. But I don't want this video to be too long, and it was already quite difficult to fit five different mod reviews into one single video, so I really hope you've enjoyed it all the same. And of course, if you have a different opinion or you'd like to share some other Doctor Who mods, then please leave them in the comments down below. But if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like or comment, and if if you'd like to see more content like this, then please subscribe. But I've been DT10, and I will see you in the next video.